Um, Do you want to roll? I mean, we might as we can. Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, we are rolling. We're just ripping here. Good man. <laughs> yeah, the red lights on. You think about all that music. You know, think about the music on on Blind Faith. A lot of these songs are like anthems. It's intertwined with our cultural DNA. It's a soundtrack to our lives. Mike Lewis, I'm the VP of Product Development here at the Fender Custom Shop in Corona, California. And what I have with me here today is this extremely cool, extremely exciting guitar that we're doing with Guitar Center and Eric Clapton. We're calling it the Blind Faith Telecaster. I would say this guitar is kind of like the epicenter of the Cream, the Blind Faith, and the Delaney and Bonnie era, more focused into the um, Blind Faith area. That's where we saw him actually playing the guitar the most. When I first saw this, it was baffling to me because obviously it's a Telecaster, but it has the Stratocaster neck on it. And I'd never seen anything like that before. And uh, I was always intrigued by it. At the time, Eric was not known for Telecaster so much. Um, and he also hadn't really come into playing the Stratocaster as much. But there's a lot of myth around this guitar. It's very mythical, you know? And we always wondered, what was it about? What was the story behind it? And where did he get that neck? And where's that guitar? And where's the original Tele neck? Where, what happened to that, you know? And how did he get the guitar? We didn't know any of this stuff. And uh, so, you know, the story goes that he had acquired a Stratocaster at one point, and he was playing around with stuff, you know, taking necks off of one and replacing the body and pickups and trying to create something that was groovy, that he dug, you know? And so we knew we had a Stratocaster because you could see it sometimes sitting next to the amp, you know, in some of the pictures. And then it turns out that that neck on that guitar is what ended up on this guitar. And if you're used to playing Telecasters, when you pick one up, you're always going to be drawn towards playing certain types of things. But somehow when there's a Strat neck on it, it changes the whole game. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. And I thought... You know, my recollection is that um, I bought this because it was the first telly with purfling that I'd ever right. seen, like right. it was a special edition or something. When we were recording Blind Faith, and a lot of it didn't get used, it, we went to a studio in North London, and uh, I think I was moving or switching back and forth. Mm. And I don't think really that I was kind of moving back into Fender from playing, uh, from playing Gibsons the whole time. And I think I, I came back to Fender briefly with this. Uh, my name's Todd Krauss. I'm a, I'm a senior master builder here at uh, Fender Custom Shop. What I do is I custom tailor instruments once in a while, do replications. This this was a creation of Eric's that he that he put together for Blind Faith, and and what's most obvious and most interesting about it is this was the neck off of his brownie, which he had put onto this telly for the Hyde Park concert back in 1969. We had the guitar here for a day, um, as well as I, I went up to, to Seattle to, to see the guitar and take measurements to get uh, the shape of the neck, the dimensions, and things like that. What I found interesting was, was the, the, the wear on this neck is, is, was really similar to the, to the Blackie. Same player, same wear. Well, originally, this, this is a, a, a rosewood neck. It would have featured a, a squared end on it, or butt, as they call it, the curvature of the board which is typical of 63 and up. And that's what pretty much what came stock on this guitar. And any, any time I, I work on something like this it's, that's historical, it, it's hard to explain, but when you open the lid, it's just magic. You, you open the case and it's just, it's almost surreal to see the guitar in person. <laughs> Do 
trying to determine the age of the year of the guitar, uh, you know, it's a, it was originally a Telecaster custom, obviously, because of the binding. And, but in looking at the photographs of him playing the guitar, most of which were not very clear, and some of the lighting and the color correction was weird, we had some close-ups of various parts of the guitar, and the smoking gun was the bridge, okay? This particular bridge, you can see the, the stamp, the fender stamp, is perpendicular with the bridge, whereas the earlier ones, it was at an angle with the pickup. So that right there told us something. And then we had to look at the saddles and say, okay, what are the saddles? Are the saddles solid steel? Are they threaded? Or, or are they solid with the little groove in them? You know? So the fact that this had the threaded saddles and the perpendicular stamp, that was a smoking gun because that's what the way the bridge was in 64. And the original prototype that we built, of which this is it, uh, we put in 63 Telecaster pickups. And this is the one that Eric played. He loved the guitar. Loved the sound of it. I think he even said that this one sounded better than his original one, original one, uh, which is not surprising. Todd makes incredible stuff. Uh, tellies were always really thin for my taste. Right. I mean, they never really, you couldn't get them to thicken up like a Strat or a Les Paul. I mean, this sounds really good. So another really cool thing about the Blind Faith Telecaster is the neck plate. In looking at this guitar and trying to determine you know, what year it is and what the specs are and stuff, we realized, hey, we don't even know what the original serial number was. So uh, what can we do? A neck plate is usually a place where we can commemorate something. And we thought, hey, this is the 50th anniversary of the Hyde Park concert by Blind Faith. And this is kind of what this guitar is all about. This is what he played at that show. Let's commemorate that with this neck plate. And let's also just make, let's make up to 50 guitars. Every guitar will have the same number, 70669. And that's the date of the concert. And that's really, really cool. In listening to the music that uh, was written on this guitar and recorded, and also seeing the photographs of him playing and the video, you notice that he's usually in the middle position here on this guitar. The switch is here, occasionally down here in the bridge. Never see it up here. All right, here's the neck. Typically on guitars with this wiring, uh, the neck pickup sounds a little hotter than it does on the modern wiring for some, for some reason, because there's less electronics going on. Bridge pickup. It's also extremely versatile and dynamic where if you turn the volume knob down, it's nice and clean and still retains the spanky tone. As you turn it up. about Eric uh, working on this guitar was is that he maintained his guitars and took better care of them than, than most people of that era. Part of what I strive to do is, is to give you a guitar that feels and sounds exactly like the one you had. He liked it. It, it, was, uh, it seemed very familiar to him. Well, it's very tasty. Yeah, that's great. When players get this guitar, I want them to have part of the same experience that Eric had playing it, but I, I also want them to be overwhelmed just with the overall experience. 
probably one of the coolest things about this doing this guitar is I get to do it. It's a it's a piece of history. It's it's from an era that I'm fond of, and uh, doing anything for Eric is always an honor. <laughs> Thank you.